All right, a couple of days ago, I had posted a picture on the Driveway Engineer Facebook group, pretty much just showcasing my ship box engine bay. And naturally, people got curious because, you know, factory PCM running carbureted engine, were curious to see how one would go about it. I actually thought it was common knowledge. Apparently not, so understand that that is free to do. You don't need to buy the MSD box unless you absolutely have to, but for free, I got 400 miles on this thing in the past four months. You know, PCM right next to that fucking manifold and it drove fine like that. Those PCMs are very durable. So I'm gonna show you how I went about it. Pretty much everything you need is free to do. Um, I won't be able to go into the into detail about each and every program. The driveway engineer has videos on each and every one, uh, each and every subject on the matter. So I'm just gonna go through the settings on Tuner Pro. Now keep in mind these are just my suggestions and what I did to go about doing this. Obviously, I'm not responsible if you blow your shit up, but you know, exercise common knowledge. Yeah, exercise common sense. Excuse me. I'm gonna just show you the PCM real quick. The routing and how shitty I wired everything. Fucking wire harness just fucking starts right there to those coils. Hangs around right here. Map sensor's wired in, but I don't need it. And this side's the power wire. This one's a constant. You know, it's all fused. The two relays, the constant right here for the uh, the orange wires on the PCM. Left bank, right bank coil. Ignition coils and the number 10, that's just for my uh, my gauges. So I know people are going to ask, can you run electronic transmissions with these? And the short answer is yes. I run a TH350, but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do so, especially when there's a write-up on Google of a guy running a Mega Squirt and the 4080, and he's running the factory PCM as a standalone transmission controller. So all you would actually have to do is just find a way to adapt the TPS to the throttle. Now, you're probably never gonna get that from me because I plan on putting an AR5 in here, but after I arm you with these tools, you should be able to kind of figure that out on your own. So, I'll show you the odometer now, and then we'll go through the computer. Let me show you real quick. So the driveway engineer has um, has tutorials on all the programs that you're going to need here to make this happen. So you got the the things you're going to need is uh, OBD link. You can buy that for 50 bucks. You can uh, you also need a laptop with Bluetooth capabilities. You need PCM hammer and you need Tuner Pro. You also need uh, XDF files and a bin that corresponds to your uh, to the PCM that you already have. So I have five revisions here. Oh my god. I have five revisions here. I'm going to show you what the car is actually running right now. Keep in mind, this is, uh, I made this work on the 9902 computers, but that's not to say that this won't work from 9907. So this is just to kind of give you an idea on how I went about it. So there is, uh, obviously, first thing you should do is disable VATS if you haven't already done that. The next thing you're going to want to look at is DTC, so Diagnostic Trouble Codes. There's three different uh, DTCs that you need to disable otherwise it's not going to spark so it's going to be 102 122 and 200 what you do is you set those three to the value of three you hit execute and then you save so it's going to that basically just gets rid of the math the injector circuit open because the injectors won't be connected and the TPS obviously the TPS you're going to keep it if you want to run the electronic transmission but you know, for those of us that are running manuals and automatic, non-electronic automatics, that doesn't apply to us. So if you have a factory, a junkyard factory engine, factory cam, just doing that, you should be able to just turn it on and it should idle. But if you want to go take it a step further and actually adjust your ignition timing, we're going to go to spark and we're going to run through all of these. Some of these do not apply to us. So coolant, uh, coolant temp spark multiplier. So... This is just going to multiply the spark based on engine coolant temperature. I have this zeroed out, but again, if you want to mess with it, it's there. Uh, IAT, 
anything IAT doesn't apply to us because we don't have the math plugged in. Spark and gear, uh, spark and park and neutral. These two will only apply to you if you manage to get the electronic transmission, like the 4060, 4080 to run. So these would apply to you. I just have them the same as my optimal timing, but these are there as, you know, in case you need them. Uh, optimal timing. This is basically where all the important stuff is going to be happening. So whatever you want your ignition table to be, that's what you do. So for example, the way you actually change this is you click, you ignore these numbers right here and you go off of RPM only. So 400, as you can see, it, it highlights this whole row down and whatever your ignition timing, whatever you, you want your ignition timing to be for that RPM, that's what you're going to set it up. So I have it at 13, 800, see it highlights these and then I have it at 22 and so on and so forth so this is a part where you actually set your own ignition timing and yes it has to be all the way down because we are ignoring these values and that's just how I made it work so that's how you would do it you save that And then you move on minimum spark advance so what this is is this is um what is this hold on so what this is is that whatever these values are it's never going to go under them so this is minimum and that is how i have it set up same as uh, my optimal timing uh high and low octane that doesn't that doesn't apply to us engine protection mode if you care about your engine and you actually want it to have an engine protection mode if it ever decides to go limp you would leave this alone me if i'm out and about and i'm far and i want to drive back home i'm going to leave this the same as my optimum ta timing table because i mean the computer is basically neutered it's only getting a uh, ect and rpm signal so it technically should never go into limp mode but if that's something you care about then you would just leave that shit alone uh again iat doesn't matter engine coolant temperature table uh, spark again this is just another Another ignition table based on uh, engine coolant temperature. It's there if you need it. I have it zeroed out. Spark timing when cranking, that one's pretty important. Um, from the ending of summer and all of winter, I had it at 13 degrees. But again, you can fine tune that to whatever you believe is best and whatever gives you better results. And that pretty much, that's it for the spark table. Now, item, there's two of them that we have to mess with here. You got under speed. And you have overspeed. So underspeed is if for some reason, you know, you have an automatic, you put it in gear, it's going to drop a few, a few hundred RPM. If these values match here, it's going to add a shit ton of timing. I have this zeroed out and it's the same for overspeed. It's going to, it'll probably retard timing. It's been about four months, so I don't really remember, but I do have these zeroed out because at the end of the day, I have uh, the optimum timing table and that's where I do all of these. That's where I edit my ignition. So these these are just extra extra luxuries if you actually need them to fine tune. But for what most of us are going to be doing, we don't really need to mess with those. There is another luxury, um, knock sensors. I don't run knock sensors because yeah, I guess mine were broken or whatever, and I don't feel like taking off the intake. But if you need knock retard, it is there, and you can adjust that accordingly. It's a it's a really good safety net, and you should use it. Me, I don't give a shit about my engines. You know, it's a it's a $280 engine. I, I just don't give a shit. And that's it. That's really it. You, if, for example, here's the other thing. I, I do want to run boost. I'm going to run boost and I'm going to show you how I am going to do it. Let's see. We go back to the optimum timing table and go back to spark. Optimum timing. Here it is. So let's say, for example, this is all hypothetical. So let's say I'm driving down the street uh let's see 3200 rpm that's when my when one psi of boost appears i'm going to pull over to the side of the road and i'm going to edit this so here it is 3200 rpm one pound of boost i want from here all the way out i'm going to want to do it to 10 degrees 10 degrees so as soon as boost hits it knocks down the timing to 10 degrees and as you can see it turned red signifying you and reminding you that hey you made this value change 
and as you can see it all stays the same here so this is just an example on, on how i'm going to do it so it's all rpm based you know as soon as boost kicks in the timing goes down it it's it's stupid simple it's stupid simple here's a here's a 3d map so yeah hopefully this helps you out um if you have any questions uh Everything I showed you here should be able to get your car off of Jackson's and going. I mean, $500 is a pretty big deal. You can use that for wheels. You can use that to put AC in your car. You can use that for your turbo kit, whatever. You know, a lot of people don't really need the MSD box, in my opinion, unless you absolutely need, you know, nitrous retard or two-step or all that other nonsense. But I don't need it. You know, this the stock BCM runs E-Fans. It'll You can run a digital dash through the OBD2 port, and you can actually keep a lot of these parameters through the obd port so you can actually see you know maps and so you can actually see engine coolant temperature rpm and that sort of thing so there's a lot of benefits to just keeping the stock pcm and all this can be done through the obd link app as far as actually uploading it like i said go to the driveway engineer youtube youtube channel and he'll show you how to do it and he's got videos on these things it typically takes about two minutes and 32 seconds to upload a revision so it's not a big deal if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer them but no and if you really need this file for comparison i'll upload it i'll find a way to upload it somewhere so yeah good luck let me know how it goes